Gina, my friend, congratulations. You know, the part of your story that always strikes me is the fact that when you were living in the Philippines, you were you were living out. Mm -hmm. And then you moved to the United States and you decide to live stealth. What was it about living in the United States that made that feel like the necessary choice? You know, um, thank you again for having me here. It, it, it's more about, you know, in the Philippines, um, I, I like to always say that trans people are culturally visible. We're part of mainstream culture, but we're not politically recognized. But when I moved to America, it was the other way around. There was a degree of political recognition, meaning I was able to change my name and gender marker and my legal documents. But then, Obviously, the culture was very different at the time. You know, at the time, it didn't allow me to to be who I am, to to speak my truth. And you know, when I moved here as a fashion model, the, the culture didn't allow me to be fully express. And for eight years, I was living this life a long time in dual reality, where I have to edit everything that I have to say. And then at some point. You know, something had to give. Yeah, it's absolutely exhausting. And I want to put a pin in that and come back to this idea of how safe we feel being ourselves. Tell me about the title of the memoir, Horse Barbie. <laughs> you know, Horse Barbie is a reclamation. When I was in the Philippines, I reached the top of the pageant world so quick at 15 years old. One can't help but, like, competitors have to, like, you know, create an insult to distract me. So they started calling me that I look like a horse to distract me. And then one day, my trans mother, who is also my pageant manager named Tiger Lily, she saw me on, on stage and she said, you know what, the way that your elegance on stage, you actually look like a horse Barbie. So the title of the book is a reclamation, but also it's a spirit. It's a spirit that I have to keep with me. As you said, when I moved to New York City, I needed to remind myself that I was that person. I, I had that vibrancy in me, that, that spirit that they carried with me in the Philippines. Like, I was out and proud in Asia, but I had to go back to the closet in America. Did you know when I was reading our introduction about what's happening in Texas and Florida and all across this country, attacks on the trans community by Republican legislators, I heard your deep sighing. And I, I feel that way, too, um, when I read it. And I think about the fact you and I became friends about 10 years ago when Laverne was on the cover of Time magazine. And it felt like all of a sudden there was increased visibility for trans folks, even if they didn't necessarily feel safe in the way that that might signal to the world. And I think about 10 years later, this moment that we find ourselves in where, where once again the community finds itself at the center of these politicized attacks. And I wonder how we took those steps forward and still have now taken all these steps back. I want to first make a comment. Uh, I, I really, truly care, uh, making sure that I honor the lived experiences of the kids that are being attacked, the, a community, a segment of our population that's already very vulnerable. I want them to know that there is nothing wrong with them. I want them to keep living their truth and pursue their dream, right? I want to say that first. But more so, I think what, what we have seen when we met in 2014, when you know there's that cultural side guys of conversation, I think what we know now is that visibility is just one part of this equity conversation. I mean, it's an important part, but I think the bigger conversation is that we need to be there for each other. It has to be a communal effort. It has to be a vibrant, dynamic conversation where the most basic access for affirmative care. I mean, I'm from the Philippines. We never had anything. If there's one thing from my journey from the Philippines to here, as I've detailed in my book, is that we had mainstream visibility in the Philippines, but we have no political recognition. It should be both. It should be the political rec recognition, the dynamic, affirmative, um, you know, basic access to care, the, the dignified way how, how we tell stories about trans youth particularly and trans people in general all of those things has to go together I have a